So Jonathan was diagnosed March 7th, 2019. It was four days before his first birthday. He had been developing really well, meeting all milestones. And about a month, a couple weeks before, he started getting really, really fussy. He started just screaming when I would put him down. But he got four small bruises on his shoulder. So one, two, three, four right here. And then one on his abdomen. And um, I knew that that was, could be a sign of low platelets. So, that, so we moved his appointment up. This kind of shows the, I want to say the difference between uh, my wife's experience and my experience, you know, um, she's in the medical field. So her experience is if it takes a while for results to come in or a phone call to come in for labs or whatever, um, that doesn't necessitate good news. I had forgotten that we were supposed to be getting a phone call. So around 10 o'clock that evening, we get a phone call. And the doctor said, um, Jonathan's labs are we got his labs back, his white blood cells are 35,000. And I knew right away that meant he had leukemia. And she said, you have to go to Seattle Children's right now. Her thoughts had already kind of started moving forward to, okay, we have to go up here. We're gonna be looking at treatment. What is like this? My thoughts are on, okay, leukemia, cancer. Is my kid gonna be dead by morning? I just felt the like my stomach drop. So we rushed him to Seattle Children's. And about 1.30 that morning, the doctor came in and said, He's got cancer. It's leukemia. So we're gonna admit you. And my my whole world fell apart. We have no other news except for he's got leukemia. And if we don't do anything about it now, he's dead. It was after everyone left. After I couldn't, like after my kids left that day, after everybody left and it was just my husband and I and that's when I fell apart. And that's when the magnitude of everything that had happened in the last 24 hours hit me. When we first got news that Jonathan got cancer, me and Kaylee both went up to her room and we cried for a little bit. I mean, we didn't know if Jonathan was gonna come back. I don't know what we would do without, without Jonathan not being able to to get cute from cancer. Alright, are we ready for this? Because you're gonna have to be. You don't have a choice. And, you know, we were four days before Jonathan's first birthday, like so when he, when he got it. And, uh, like, the kid hasn't even had a year of life, and we're now gonna be fighting for it? That's hard. It happened quick. I don't think I slept for four days. Um, and you're in the hospital the whole time. You know, he doesn't understand that, that they're doing this to give him medicine to save his life. And so he doesn't understand that they need, that this is to save his life. They just know that they're hurting him. And they know, he knows that mommy's al allowing them to hurt him. And that's the, that's the hardest part is the, the holding him down and saying, I, I know you don't want to do this. I know this hurts, but you have to. You have to. There's no other choice. We didn't get to see mom except for on weekends and on Skype calls at the nights. And Jonathan, he couldn't walk anymore. He couldn't interact with us anymore. And he was just, he wasn't our normal brother anymore. If I were the cancer kid, I'd feel bad. I mean, I don't want to be the center of attention while my siblings just get to sit in the shadows, barely being known at all. And that's, that's hard to take in. That's hard to process. There was one part, point towards the end of his treatment that we were going into the, hot, into the clinic every other day to get platelets because his system was just so exhausted. And during that time, I think there was a two month span where I didn't see physically hold my kids or see my kids. Um, they had to stay home because Jonathan was just too fragile and they went to school and I was like, if he gets a cold, he could die. Like, they, you can't come up. The nights that mom got to come home, 
with Jonathan. And when they had a tickle back up, it started to make me cry. I mean, when you've gone through trauma like that, and, and it is it is trauma, when you go through trauma like that, when I have to tell my kids, I'm sorry, I can't come home, you know that you're creating suffering for not just the one who's going through it, but the other two. Like, it is the most helpless feeling I have ever had. One night, Jonathan was in the hospital and I had a nightmare that he died and I could not take that in. I woke up that morning crying. And then a few days later, MCP. And me and Caleb were just so excited, right? Right? So, you okay, Kaylee? <laughs> So there was a flyer that um, the cast from Frozen was going to come and, and sing, and Jonathan loved it. He loves Frozen. He loves Olaf, and he loved it. I just was talking to Levi, and I was like, man, if my daughter knew that the cast of Frozen was here, uh, she'd lose her cookies. Like, I can't tell my daughter about this, so don't say anything if you ever meet my family. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, he said, hey, if I got frozen tickets. Can your daughter come up? And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me right now? Because I haven't had a chance to go on a date with my daughter in a year. Somebody gave us tickets to go see Frozen. What do you think about that? Just me and you. Yes! You were like, I'm going to Frozen with Mom! You were so excited, and we were so happy for you. And when we found out that Melodic did more than just, you know, some of this, it was an agency that, you know, there was concerts and artists who could do shout outs for individuals, and they were partnering with other organizations. Um, and they were looking at us like, hey, if you, you know, your kids want to come on board to do some of this stuff and participate, we would love to have them. I mean, this is what we're out there for. So instead of it being, well, we only have, you know, this in school and, you know, humdrum, mom's not here, Jonathan's not here. It's, we have something to look forward to. You want to come over here? Do you want to snuggle? Oh. We got the email. There's an opportunity to interview an astronaut. So I was like, Hey kids, do you want to interview an astronaut? And they're like, oh yeah. Hello, my name is TJ and this is my sister Kaylee. We're from Washington State and we have a question for you. Do you play video games in space? And if so, what kind? Ha, ah, that is such an awesome question. Do we play video games in space? And uh, so we got the email about the Space for Art project and I said, hey, would you like to do this? You know, you could write a song and you'll get to hang with this astronaut. And they were like, yeah, that sounds super cool. So it was nice to connect with other people and then see like how they felt and how their feelings were so similar to us. And it helped us so much to figure out that there were other people that felt like us. When I heard about what they were intending on doing, and just kind of how big that was. It's one in however many hundred million kids who gets to have this opportunity. And how many of those hundred million or whatever are having something that's going into space? While not necessarily a counseling session, there's, you know, it is music therapy, but it does bring the kids to open up a bit more than they normally would with just a one-on-one -on -one chat with somebody. They can feel comfortable and still be silly and be kids. So one of the side effects of Jonathan's treatment is speech apraxia. So he under he processes everything. He can understand what you're saying. Developmentally, he's there. 
but his brain can't organize the thoughts to speak. And so he's been very behind with speech for that reason. And music is one of the best things you can do to help that because he's not thinking about what he's doing. So Tanisha started music therapy and wrote these just fun songs for him. So it's helped him be less frustrated because it's given him the gift of communication. You know, a year ago, he couldn't even say mom and dad. And now he can say, I'm hungry. That's, I mean, a huge part of that is melodic caring. To me, it feels like that when London was up there, I felt like I was like falling apart. But when everything came back, Jonathan mom was coming back home. I felt like I was going back together and it also felt like someone was helping us and no it's not like I'm in the shadows anymore you know we talk a lot about gratitude like there need to be more words for gratitude or thank you that, that like there just need to be more words <laughs> So this picture is called Roots, and it is an imprint on my cancer journey in which, where Jonathan had cancer, and it helped me grow from a small seed to a strong tree. Yeah. I need, I need happy dino dad. Oh, yes, yeah, sing, yeah, happy sing happy dinosaur. Let's sing happy dinosaur. If, if it weren't for Melodic Caring Project, I can't say thank you enough. Happy dinosaurs. Happy dinosaurs. Talking great big rock. Thank you so, so, so much for helping me through this and helping my sister, my mom, my dad, and Jonathan through this cancer journey. And if you were somebody out there that has cancer, or has a sibling that has cancer, you can get through it. it. It's gonna be very hard, I know that, but you will get through it. It is okay, there are people out there that are looking out for you. You are never alone. <laughs>